Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at how we clear space when you're working with Final Cut Pro 10. So basically Final Cut Pro 10, as you're working with it and creating multiple libraries and projects, will eventually take up more and more space on your hard drive through the render files that it creates, and also through some of the media that you're capturing as you're working in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, whether you are brand new to Final Cut Pro 10 or you've been using Final Cut Pro 10 for a while, there'll be some nice tips and tricks in here for how you can manage that space on your hard drive. So first of all, we're gonna be having a look at how we use the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro 10 to manage those libraries. We're also gonna have a look at how we go into the libraries and figure out and see where Final Cut Pro is storing things. So where those render files are going, where the original media is going. And I think that's really important when you're thinking about how you're managing your drive space with Final Cut Pro 10 and kind of dealing with the large files that you get when you work with video. And then in the second part of this tutorial, we're gonna be having a look at Arctic Whiteness's Final Cut Library Manager, which allows you to manage multiple libraries. So managing the libraries in Final Cut Pro 10 is good if you've got only a handful of projects, but as you scale up and you're working on more and more projects, then being able to view all those projects and get an overview of where the render files are, where the analysis files are and how much space is being taken up by individual projects can save you a lot of time if you can manage that from outside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now, if you've got to the point where Final Cut Pro won't even open because your hard drive is so full, don't worry, we're also gonna have a look at how you clear library files without even opening up uh, Final Cut Pro 10 or needing to use Arctic Whiteness's Final Cut Library Manager. So without further ado, let's uh, dive in and have a look at how we clear space in Final Cut Pro 10 um, and free up all that hard drive space that you need so you can edit smoothly and get working on your projects. So let's dive into Final Cut Pro and look at how we can manage our libraries in Final Cut Pro. So we're going to look at three things here. One is how we can manage this manually um, within Final Cut Pro, how we can kind of delete render files and stuff like that and that space taken up on our hard drive. The second one is we're going to actually have a look at how we can delete stuff from within the Final Cut Pro library itself. So how we can go to the finder, um, actually look at the, the file where our files are stored and uh, delete stuff manually there, which is really useful if your hard drive is completely full up and you can't even um, open up any software or anything like that. So that will be a useful tip for those that have really filled up their, their hard drive. And then we're going to have a look at Arctic Whiteness's Final Cut Pro Library Manager, which is really useful when you end up with a lot of libraries, so you're working on a lot of different projects. But first of all, we'll dive into the kind of first two completely free methods of doing this, um, which are to do it firstly in Final Cut Pro, and then to have a look at how you do it in the Finder. So first of all, um, when we have Final Cut Pro open in our interface, up at the top left, we'll see our library. So those are these four little squares with stars in them. And these can contain any number of edits um, for different pieces of work that we're creating. So here I have uh, an edit for a client I'm doing and a couple of video tutorials that I'm working on. And basically in these libraries, if we highlight them one at a time, you can see across in the inspector, um, I can see how big they are. So this is 3.6 gigabytes. My exporting transparency um, is just under one gigabyte, so 896 megabytes. And my AAA Solid Foundations video is 11.3 gigabytes, so a bit bigger. It's a bit of a longer edit. It contains um, two or three different edits. And so the render files and all that kind of stuff takes up a bit more space on the hard drive. Now, one thing to do um, when you're working in Final Cut Pro, first of all, is to keep libraries closed where you can. So try and only have one or two or three libraries open at any one time. Um, and that will mean that when you open up Final Cut Pro, um, Final Cut Pro will open a bit quicker um, and also won't open any, any projects up or any libraries up that you don't want it to open. So we can right click on a library here and close it and we can always reopen it. So basically if we go to file, open library, we can see that library that we just closed and um, we can open it up. So basically um, by default on your hard drive, libraries that you create are stored in the movies folder. So this is if you're working on a Mac where you don't have an external hard drive plugged in and you're storing stuff locally on your computer, uh, Final Cut Pro will kind of point you towards your movies folder when you first create those libraries. And the first kind of default library that it creates will actually be called Untitled and it will drop it into the, the movies folder. So you should see a link to that um, when you kind of navigate your, your finder. So you can see down at the bottom here, the daisy chain shows me that it's in Macintosh HD, users, Ben Housel, and movies. So we'll come back into Final Cut Pro and the step um, that we're gonna have a look at here is how we delete render files 
from within Final Cut Pro. So when we're finished with a project or maybe we're going to come back and work on it in a couple of weeks, but we need to clear up some space, um, we can delete render files from within Final Cut Pro itself. So I'm going to come up to the file menu and I've got my library selected here. And I'm going to go to file and then this option, um, delete generated library files. So this will allow us to click on it first of all. And you can see here we have some options for deleting render files. So we can delete our render files and we can delete either the unused render files, so render files that Final Cut Pro has made but that are no longer used in the edit, or we can delete all render files. Now deleting all render files um, isn't going to cause any problems, it's just going to mean that sometimes you might need to re-render stuff when you continue to work on it. And the same for optimized media and proxy media. We can always regenerate that content um, if we open up our edits again. So any of these generated library files we can delete them, it's not a problem. So we can click OK. And all we're losing there is time when we come to work on it. So you can see the 11.3 gigabytes, if I just click away from that once and then back to it, um, is now 53 megabytes. So I have all my media stored in external files, so it's really only the render files that were taking up space within that library. So we've cleared a lot of space there by doing that. So I'm going to right click and close this library. What I don't want to happen now is to jump back to the timeline um, for that project, uh, that piece of work, and then for things to start re-rendering, that's going to start to take up more space. So now with these two uh, libraries, we can see I've got 896 megabytes in this one, and I've also got 3.6 megabytes here in this one. So basically I can do the same for those, go to File, um, Delete Generated Library Files, and then delete the render files and everything like that. Now one way of uh, keeping your library size down um, is to turn off background rendering. So if we come to Final Cut Pro, we can come to our preferences, and those render files are created um, in the background. So as we're editing in Final Cut Pro, if we pause or move away from the timeline, um, we'll get rendering that will happen um, as we kind of work. And we can turn background rendering off. It means that we only render when we want to. So if we're experiencing slowness of playback, or something like that, and then we can render out our footage manually. So otherwise, Final Cut Pro will kind of uh, render as soon as we pause or take a break from moving around a timeline, it will uh, do some background rendering. So if we close that and we bring up a timeline here, oh, and it looks like this one is empty, so we'll come back to this one. I'm gonna scroll up. So with this uh, particular project, um, you can see I've got some unrendered uh, elements here. And Final Cut Pro now is going to, um, it's not going to render them for me. So the auto rendering is turned off. So if I go to modify and either render selection or render all, then I can render what's on my timeline. So what will happen here is I'll get a rendering now happening once I've decided to click uh, render. And you can see we've got a background render going on now, but we had to turn that on uh, for it to work. So just for this demo, we don't need to let it render all the way out. Um, so we'll stop that for the moment. It will keep the render files that we've already created. And if we click away to Smart Collections here, then back to our tutorial edit, we'll see that that size has gone up to 1.7 gigabytes. So with that little bit of rendering, um, because I've got some titles uh, in here, basically um, it's starting to render out a larger file size. Now, we've seen how we can clean that up in Final Cut Pro, but sometimes you'll want to do that in the library itself. So this is the second method for clearing up your, your library. So if we right click on the library, we can go to Reveal in Finder, and this is really useful for finding out where your library is saved. So you'll see whether it's saved in the Movies folder, or for me, when I click here, we'll see that this is actually saved if I right click at the top here on Santa Catalina, Tutorials, Final Cut Pro Tutorials in my archive and then in this Exporting Transparency uh, folder. So basically you can see all the media that I have is organized in there and really just a couple of screen recordings and then the exported uh, file is included in there as well. So if I right click on this library I can go to Show Package Contents. So it looks like a file when we see the library here, and if we double click on it, it will open it up in Final Cut Pro. But actually, if we right click on it, we'll see that it's this package, and we can go in there and have a look. So this is um, our event. Um, so you can see our event listed up here. So 12.09.2019, uh, when I created the, the library. 
and we can change these names. But basically in the render files now, we'll see in here this list of short uh, kind of QuickTime movies and they don't have .mov at the end. But basically these are our render files. So you can see it's from frame zero to frame 1023 and so on and so forth. Now these render files um, can be regenerated. So we can actually delete these um, here. So if I hold down command and press the backspace key, it will delete those render files. And now if I come back to Final Cut Pro, actually I just need to come down here and right click and empty my trash. And we come back to Final Cut Pro, then um, we can see if we go to the library here that the size has dropped right down again. So those render files have basically um, been deleted. So that's a manual way that we can delete those render files. And that's really useful if your computer is completely full up and you can't even open up Final Cut Pro, everything's behaving very slowly. Then you can go in and kind of right click on those libraries and delete the render files. And those render files in your libraries, if you have a look at the size of them, so let's just have a look at another one in here. You can see I've got render files in here. If I do Command and I, you can see there's not many in here, there's uh, 55 megabytes, but this would be where you would find those kind of bigger um, file sizes. And this is where Arctic Whiteness's library manager is useful um, because it scans those Final Cut Pro projects. Um, so without us having to go through all of these and figure out where I've remembered to delete render files, and where I haven't remembered to delete render files, I can basically go through into Arctic Whiteness's library manager and it will show me um, where I can delete things. So now we'll dive in and have a look at the library manager, which will kind of show us how we delete files en masse much more easily. So we're gonna to come to Final Cut Library Manager by Arctic Whiteness. And basically in here, Arctic Whiteness will scan um, a drive or a folder and find all the Final Cut profiles that you have in that particular folder. So you can see here, there's a whole bunch of different Final Cut Pro projects where I haven't cleaned things up. So I'm pointing this at my Final Cut Pro tutorials uh, folder and just to kind of keep things simple, although we can point it at an entire hard drive. Um, but basically in here, of the tutorials that I've created, um, you can see that lots of these have over 10, over 50 gigabytes worth of space that I can save by deleting those render files. So I've got this customizing the interface tutorial and in here you can see that if I have a look at the interface here, when I've selected that folder, I can select my library, I can open this up and kind of have a look at what's inside there. Um, and I can also then check my render files. So basically down here at the bottom, um, it's saying from what I have checked, I'm gonna clean out 62 gigabytes for a potential saving of almost 300 gigabytes. Um, and I can go through and see uh, which files I'm not working on anymore. So I'm not working on this unboxing of the mic stand so I can clean up the render files. And these blue files are the optimized media so I can clean those up as well. So you can see by selecting the render files and the optimized media from those top two libraries, um, I'm clearing over 100 megabytes and I can really clearly see what I'm clearing here in Final Cut Library Manager. So I finished this tutorial as well um, and I have finished this one too so we can clean these up. So we're going to get close to 200 gigabytes soon which is great and some of these files are quite old so I haven't looked at this file since the 2nd of August. Um, and I forgot that I hadn't cleaned up the render files on there. So now I can just check this box and it's gonna delete those render files. I know that if I open that project again, then I can get those render files back. So once I've selected um, a series of files that I want to clean up, then I can use this button at the bottom, the little brush, click that. And basically um, I'm gonna get this little message so Final Cut Pro Library Manager is telling me that I can delete um, 156 gigabytes of these files, um, but that 55 of what I've selected are basically um, not gonna be deleted because they have this little error message there and I need to go and check those. So if I hit delete completely, it's now going to uh, delete those files, but it wants me to quit Final Cut Pro. So I'll quit Final Cut Pro and continue cleaning. 
So you can see Final Cut Library Manager has basically gone through those different libraries, cleared out the render files, warned me when it's not sure um, whether it can or can't delete um, some of these optimized uh, files. So we can go in here and have a look at the project itself and see if we can clean those up, perhaps open the project up. Um, but as we go through, you can see we can keep selecting those render files for the most part um, and clicking clean and then deleting large chunks of render files all in one go. So if you're working across a lot of drives, then Final Cut Library Manager from Arctic Whiteness is really gonna save you a lot of time. If you're working on just a few projects um, on Final Cut Pro 10, then basically using the internal management tools or going into the library yourself and deleting files will probably um, be enough for you. There is also a demo version as well, which will do the scanning, but not the cleaning. So you can basically check that out and see how it works um, before you kind of commit to, to buying it um, and deciding whether it's the, the kind of app you want. So I hope you found that tutorial useful. Managing project size and the library size as Final Cut Pro continues to render things is always a challenge. Um, and if you have any questions about it, then please do leave a comment below. Also, if you do delete files uh, from your projects, then do uh, let me know in the comments how much uh, you saved, how much space you saved in gigabytes on your hard drive. Um, it'd be interesting to, to see how many uh, gigabytes we, we save um, by kind of using these techniques. So thanks for watching and I will see you on the next tutorial.